Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Terry and Chuck's What the Fuck. Let's dive straight into the action. Now, just before we begin, Chuck, we have recently received an email last week that I would like to share with everyone at the end of the show. So who's it from? And what's it about? Oh, will be revealed at the end of this show when we have our very first live interview. But until then, take it away, Chuck. <laughs> okay, Terry. Now I'm wondering, have you ever seen Two Girls, One Cup? Oh, hell yeah. I ate a full two-liter tub of chocolate ice cream. It made me so hungry. I don't really know who could eat after that. But what would you say, Terry, if I told you that we are going to show it right here on YouTube? Oh my God, are you fucking serious? Oh, I'm dead serious. Well, hurry up and pull that shit up for everyone in the audience. You're gonna love this shit. <laughs> okay, okay, calm down, Terry. This is two girls, one cup. In three, two, one. Oh, for fuck's sake, Chuck. Looks like I've chubbed up for nothing. <laughs> there you have it, everyone. Two girls, one cup for the first time on YouTube. God damn it, Chuck. That is completely fucked up. How am I supposed to rib myself for this 13-inch boner? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked. I have just the person to help you out. But it might cost you. <laughs> I wonder how much their asking price is. Because I'll go and apply for a loan right now. Well, I thought selling yourself for sex was a crime. It's not a crime if your brother offers you $20. 20 bucks is 20 bucks, I guess. <laughs> I remember I was stuck in town once. And I had to suck off a guy for bus money. Oh, shit. I'm sorry to hear about that, Terry. Must have been terrible. It's all right. I ended up walking home to think about what I had done. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, Terry. <laughs> hey, Chuck. Have you ever seen anything strange while being walking in the woods? I've definitely seen my fair share of strange, Terry. What do you ask? Have you ever seen trees breeding? Like, yeah, I know they breathe, but trees don't have lungs, so I don't think it's actually possible to see it visually. I don't know what lungs have to do with fucking. Hold up a minute, I I'm confused. Here, Chuck, maybe it's better if I just show you. Oh, breeding. <laughs> They're literally just having a root out in public. That tree's got some serious wood, am I right? I'm actually thinking that this is how Groot was conceived. Imagine if the poor old tree gets home and finds out that he has termites on his nuts. <laughs> Just look at the poor old bugger, trying to plant his seed. <laughs> <laughs> now actually, speaking of being in the woods, one of my favorite inventions of all time would have to be the thermos. Oh, most definitely. Being able to enjoy some nice, hot, fresh soup first thing in the morning, nothing better. Indeed, Terry. But unfortunately, something tells me that they don't make them how they used to. I don't think it's the thermos, Chuck. I can clearly see the problem. He's obviously used salt instead of using sugar. <laughs> Not to mention the mistake of pre-creaming the thermos before adding the coffee. I found my dad's thermos once. He was laying in bed. Must have passed out because it was still in his hand. And it was full to the brim with cream. I could tell that it was fresh. It was all warm. But I tried my luck. And unfortunately, the cream must have gone off. It tasted horrible. Oh, for fuck's sake, Terry. <laughs> All right then, Chuck. Now I know there are many ways to prepare vegetables, for example. You can dice, you can slice them, you can mash and you can grate them, but I'm not sure about this method. Why is it I'm always finding out on this show that I'm doing things wrong? I always thought gravy goes on after it's cooked, not beforehand. <laughs> Uncle Steve always made me wash the dirt off his vegetables, but he would never cook them. He would just put them back in the drawer. <laughs> Not even gonna mention washing off his old spud bag. <laughs> I thought vegetables tasted like shit naturally. They don't need your Uncle Steve's help. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I had to stay at Uncle Steve's once. When I was 12, I woke up, heard a noise coming from the shed. As I was pretty brave as a kid, I went out to investigate. I kicked open the door and my Uncle Steve was naked up behind his best friend Gary. Giving him the Heimlich maneuver. Must have choked on a snack while playing strip poker or something. I'll never forget the look on my Uncle Steve's face when he was singing out to Jesus. And he must have started getting really scared Gary was gonna die because he was squeezing him faster and faster. And then all of a sudden, my ankle did this magic trick. And don't ask me how he done it, but whatever Gary was choking on, shut out the end of his penis. I ran up to my uncle and started celebrating. 
He turned around like he had seen a ghost. He asked me if I had seen everything. And I just replied, I don't care about that. I want to know how you did that magic trick. He asked what magic trick. So I told him what I had seen. And he told me that I must not tell anyone about what I had seen. Because Penn and Teller had been trying to steal this trick for years. And if they learn even the slightest detail, he won't be able to go unfold us and win it. But I think he should be celebrated as a hero for saving Gary's life. Because screaming, Jesus, I'm coming, I'm coming. He must have only been inches away from death. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ, Terry. But speaking of making love, did you end up finding a date on Valentine's this year? Well, unfortunately, I didn't, Chuck. Got fired from my calling job at Bingo. Apparently, food for two with a hairy view isn't the way to call the number 69. (laughs) I wouldn't feel too bad. Lots of people didn't find love on Valentine's Day. Check this person out, for example. (laughs) Can you imagine you go out and spend $20,000 at a jewelry store to buy a necklace for your Valentine's Day to wear out on a romantic dinner, and you end up looking stupid because she wears it around her chin and can't eat anything? (laughs) Imagine spending the same amount of money for ballet lessons. They make you balance heavy books on your head, then after six weeks you get home and notice your neck's gone. (laughs) Imagine trying to look both ways to cross the street. Uh-huh. Imagine if you made love and gave her a love bite on the neck, then when you open your eyes in the morning, she has one big purple cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a couple of real photos with real backstories. Now, this picture here is the jaws of a fruit shark. Russian fisherman Roman Ferdorstov has caught a wide variety of astounding marine species over the years, but none have ever been as terrifying as the fruit shark pictured here a living fossil that's remained unchanged for 80 million years. This beast boasts 300 razor-sharp teeth that it uses to eat everything from squid to other sharks. Well, Terry, if I ever went to jail, I'd describe this shark to all of the other inmates. Then I would go on to tell them that I had surgery to replace my asshole with a frilled shark's jaws. Well, I'd just go one better and just place one of these sharks directly up my ass. Because you never know, Chuck, someone could call you bluff. (laughs) <laughs> I'll go one better then. I'll shove one of these up my ass and nobody would even think about it. Jesus fucking Christ, what the fuck is that? Well, Terry, this here is the Florida skunk ape. Whether Bigfoot is real remains to be seen, and the same is true for the Florida so-called skunk ape. A lesser known variation of the mythical primate, the skunk ape was reportedly first sighted in 1942. And the most convincing proof of its existence is this photograph that was anonymously sent in to the Sarasota County Sheriff's Department on December 29, 2000. The woman who mailed the ominous photo seen here claimed to be the ape-like creature. It had made whooping noises for three straight nights, and it had an awful smell like rotten eggs. And then it fled, never to be seen again. (laughs) I can just imagine your ass making whooping noises for three straight hours and stinking up the place. Be even stranger when they wonder why I'm eating bananas up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terry, we have time for one more before our guest arrives. All right, Chuck, I got one that'll fuck with your mind. What the fuck? How is that even possible? I looked at this for a long time, and I couldn't work out what was going on either. I know, I still can't figure it out. The only time I ever seen a lady in this position is when I picked up at an over-80s knot and halfway through giving me a Cleveland steamer, she threw out a hip. Oh, Jesus, Terry. That's not even the half of it, Chuck. When she fell down, she was half-crowned and drew all over me with a stinky bum crayon. <laughs> okay, enough, Terry, enough. It was like I was being tortured by a mob bus, putting cigars all out all over my body, but the cigar was a big, bad smell of mookie stick. Oh, my God, I've got nothing to say to that, Terry. All right, now I've got a quick joke for everyone. Oh, Jesus. When I was younger, we was driving behind a garbage truck when a big dude flew out and thumped against the windshield. Embarrassed and trying to spare me my innocence, my mother turned around and said, Don't worry, dear. That was just an insect. Wow, I replied. I'm surprised he could get even off the ground with a cock like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it looks like it's time to bring out our special guest. Are you ready, Terry? Oh, I've been waiting all day for this. Okay, well, we're about to go live with someone that wrote us an email recently we would like to address. Hello, Sherry. 
Hello? Hello? Well, 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 if it isn't the devil herself. Hello, Sherry. Firstly, thank you for agreeing to be a part of our show. I'm a bit confused. I thought this was an interview with Reader's Digest arranged by my local church, hence... Why are we here? Why we are here? Well, you would be wrong, Sherry. This is Terry and Chuck, and we would like to ask you some questions. Okay. Why? What's this all about? Why was I invited to my church? Well, let me fill everybody in. So it appears here, Sherry took it upon herself to write us an email to deathcockentertainment at gmail.com, and it reads the following. To whom it may concern. I recently viewed your YouTube channel, and to be quite blunt, I found it disgusting. Can you please consider removing your content, as it offends me deeply? The things you mention on your channel are very disturbing and offend me as a woman. I know you will do the right thing and remove all your content. How would you like for people to make fun of you? I bet you are some 16-year-old boys trying to be funny, but you were not funny. I truly think you need to seek Jesus and his forgiveness for the things you or whoever say them. I'll be monitoring your channel and I hope to see your videos removed as soon as possible. Kind regards, Sherry fucking Wilson. I sure did write that. Yes, I did. And I stand by it. Well, here's our reply. I'm not interested in your replies. I want you shut down. I am leaving. Well, actually, I wouldn't do that, Sherry, if I was you. We thought you might do that, so we paid a well-trained sniper to make sure you hear everything out. If you move, we will be forced to shoot. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, now that you're all ears... Firstly, let me tell you, Mrs. Wilson, what I think's disgusting. The dick-stained teeth in your email profile picture looks like you'd have the breath of a thousand dicks. I beg your pardon? And secondly, Mrs. Wilson, we won't be removing any content from our channel. If you don't like it, don't fucking watch it. But you're offending me deeply. How about I dig up your parents and offend them, if you know what I mean? If you don't know what I mean, I mean I'll offend them with my penis. Never ever have I heard such filth. Okay, Jesus, Terry, let's just keep it professional. Oh, okay, I'll keep it professional, Chuck. I'll leave a parents a $50 tip, but only if I can finish in a dad. <laughs> How dare you speak like this in the house of God? Oh, that's right. I believe you told us to seek Jesus. And what was it? Ask for his forgiveness, I believe. It would go a long way to redeem your souls. I wouldn't be surprised if you have a one-way ticket to the fires below. <laughs> well, that might not surprise you, Sherry. But maybe this footage we have of you will surprise you. <laughs> what footage? Have you been stalking me? Well, we got a video clip from your reverend, who, by the way, is a massive fan of our show, of a little something you did last week. Do you remember? Uh, um, w what? <laughs> Play the clip. Oh, yeah, that's it, Sherry. Mm. You're gonna bloody suck up my kidneys you keep doing it like that. for shitting in my fucking bath. Is that a camera? Just act normal. <laughs> what do you think of that, you dirty ass eating bitch? Uh, 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 um. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you was the one seeking Jesus with your fucking tongue. Well, well, I'd be dumbfounded too, Sherry. <laughs> yeah, well, I've had enough of this, bitch. Take the shot. 
Well, I hope you have a great rest of the day, Sherry. That brings this live interview to a close. And it appears Sherry had to go meet someone. <laughs> so thank you once again, Sherry, for your time. We will be uploading that clip of Sherry and the Priest for anyone that wants to see it again. Thanks again, Reverend, for sending that one in to us. Which reminds me, if anyone else has anything to send in, please forward it to us here at Deathcock Entertainment at gmail.com. The email link will be provided in the description below. All right, well, it's bye for now, and I hope you can join us for the next one. But not Sherry. She can fuck off. Stay stone, motherfuckers. We are out.